When I started this, I'm Carlos Menchaca, chair of the New York City's Council on Immigration. Today, the Committee on Immigration will hear amendments to two bills that would benefit every single New Yorker, regardless of race, creed, religion, gender, identity, nationality, or immigration status. New York City stands firm in its commitment to continue building a safe and hate-free environment where all are welcomed and treated with respect. Yo soy Carlos Menchaca, el presidente del Comité de Inmigración del Consejo de la Ciudad. Hoy el Comité de Inmigración escuchará a dos proyectos de ley que beneficiarán a cada neoyorquino. Independiente de su raza, credo, religión, identidad de género, nacionalidad o estatus migratorio. Nueva York se mantiene firme en su compromiso de continuar construyendo un ambiente seguro y sin odio, donde todos los neoyorquinos son bienvenidos y tratamos todos con respeto. Muchas gracias. Addressing the need of immigrant New Yorkers has never been more critical. The rapid rate at which federal immigration policies are likely to change creates a need for additional support for immigrant New Yorkers, as well as the agencies in this city that serve them. Intro 1566 would expand the role of the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs by requiring that they, re that they establish a state and federal affairs unit to follow changing federal laws and policies. Work closely with the Office of Civil Justice Coordinator to assess the legal service needs of immigrants and availability of all the free services that we're building out of our city council and mayor budget. Monitor city agency compliance with laws and policies designed to protect immigrants. Report on these and other efforts to the city council to consult with and advise city agencies on U and T visa certification standards uh, issued by the city agencies, and then add and expand on reporting, specifically on metrics for MOYA programs, including our legal services. Intro 1578 would require MOYA to establish an interagency task force that will create that will be created so that they can meet regularly to coordinate city services for immigrant New Yorkers and our city's mixed status families regarding agency compliance with relevant local laws relating to immigrants, legal and policy developments at the state and the federal level, and their impact at our city level. Obstacles to assessing city programs and services to review Moya's solicitation and consideration of community input. Unique services needs of particularly vulnerable and immigrant populations, including victims of crime, domestic violence, and human trafficking. Individuals who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, or gender nonconforming, individuals involved in criminal justice systems, and minors our youth. The President's irresponsible rhetoric and discriminatory policies are an affront to all New Yorkers and do not fall in line with our core values like inclusion, respect for personal privacy, compassion, and rule of law. These are the American values that make this country strong and hold us together. Now, we must say, and we continue to say, and I want to say thank you to all the members of this Immigration Committee and the City Council who yesterday came out in a strong voice with the Speaker of the City Council and said very clearly that we are with our DACA family, we are with our immigrants, and we are with everyone who makes themselves uh, uh, a New Yorker in the values that we stand for. The things that are fueling our President today are rooted in a racist, xenophobic, and hateful values white supremacists, these are the people that will not stand, we will not stand for, and we will continue to innovate in our ways as a city to strengthen diversity, inclusion, justice, and fairness. That is how we have overcome the odds in the past, and that is how we will keep moving forward. So I'm very happy that we're moving these pieces of legislation with these amendments, and I now call on 
our council member Danny Drum to speak on his bill. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman Chaka. Um, intro 1566A aims to strengthen our city's historic commitment to immigrants by clarifying and expanding the duties of the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs, or MOYA. This legislation encourages MOYA's coordination with relevant entities to address concerns, namely obstacles to assessing city programs, benefits, and services. It also requires Moya to report to the council and the public on its progress on various metrics. Particularly notable are the bill's provisions related to encouraging immigrant crime victims and witnesses to step forward and cooperate with law enforcement. Our city needs to do better when it comes to helping those individuals apply for U and T non-immigrant statuses. The bill's requirement that Moya ensure coordination and then report back necessary data will help increase the city's use of this important crime-fighting tool. I want to thank Committee Council Indiana Porta, Chairman Chaka, of course, Council Member Idanis Rodriguez, and finally, Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito for her tireless leadership when it comes to responding to the needs of our city's immigrant population. And I was very proud that Speaker uh, Viverito mentioned this legislation as one of our first pieces uh, in terms of our response to the horrible decision by our racist, xenophobic President Donald Trump. In the wake of a federal administration implementing policy that is as cruel and xenophobic as it is misguided, New York City is stepping up, and I'm very proud to be part of this effort. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilmember Drum. And now I'd like to hand it over to Councilmember Idanis Rodriguez for a few words. Thank you, Chairman Chaka, and i also like to thank my co-lead, sponsor on this legislation, Danny Drone, as well as Speaker Melissa Maverito for making this bill a priority. Over the holiday weekend, we made, when many families were away celebrating the end of the summer, our president came to the terrible decision to end the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program started by President Obama to help keep Americans who were brought here as children from being deported. But yesterday, we raised our voices from New, York, from New York City to Chicago to Boston to Los Angeles and cities throughout the nation in a collective rejection of this heartless and cowardly move. And today and tomorrow, we will be legislate in response as well, reaffirming that New York City has always been and always will be a home and a ceiling, a ceiling, ceiling for immigrants. The advertise that immigrants face in our countries Today, uh, I, today often looks as if it cannot be overcome, from being cut our front section public services to facing threat of deportation, xenophobia, xenophobia, harassment, and racism, to not only supporting themselves and their family here, but often relatives back in their native countries. But yet, I remain in, impressed and astounded by their resiliency and tenacity in their face in this persecution. I want to acknowledge Amanda Morales Guerra, a Guatemalan mother of three now facing deportation who is standing strong in the defiance, defiance of unjust laws in a church in my district. I want to acknowledge Eber Garcia Vasquez, a member of the Teamster Union for over 25 years who now face deportation despite having a family here where he has contributed so much. Both of these brave individuals fled violence in their home countries in Central America, yet our government will seek to put them at risk when they have done nothing wrong in this country but be productive members of society. I want to acknowledge the many immigrants documented and undocumented serving in the United States Armed Force who are literally putting their lives on the line to defend a country that often rejects their place in it. I also want to acknowledge Alfonso Guillén a dreamer who gave his life in Texas last week while saving the lives of others during and after Hurricane Harvey. He wasn't asked to do this. He wasn't, first a first, he wasn't a first responder. He was a radio DJ, but he believed in humanity, something he feels like those in Washington today do not. He believed it was his duty to save the lives of those in need, and we speak 
in his face when we as a nation try to remove people like him from our country. I was arrested yesterday in an act of civil disobedience because I believe so strongly that this city and this country are for everyone. It is why I emigrated here as a young 18 years old, and it is why I sought out public service. What is happening in this country today is simply heartbreaking. We are letting, we are letting racist, xenophobic, and those with an exclusionary sense or nationalism trample on the progress we made as a nation. However, I and hundreds of thousands of others, my, of my colleagues in this room included, are not going to take this without a fight. And that's why I'm so proud to have see Carlos Menchaca chairing the immigrant committee who will lead our fight. We will continue to march. We will continue to lift up our voices in defense of our brothers and sisters, and we will stop these evil policies from being enacted and enforced. This goes not only for immigrants, but for the transgender community being shut out from our military. It goes for our Muslim brothers and sisters who are facing blatant discrimination through their racist attempts at a travel ban. It goes for everyone who has been impacted by the rise in hate crimes and fear tactics perpetrated by coerced care of a country that looks a little bit different than then. Today, I'm calling for a national movement to resist these policies through our nonviolent civil disobedience. And together with the chairman of this committee, I'm calling on 800,000 people to be the voice of those who cannot always afford to fight for themselves to for fear of deportation. Together and united, we can stand up to the Trump administration and demand the justice we deserve. I thank my colleague in this body for so often standing on the right side of the issues, serving as a model on how we can continue to resist policies that put our neighbors at risk. I'm proud that we are responding to the announcements of the past, of the past few days so quickly with legislation that will remind our immigrants, brothers and sisters, that this is their home and will always be their home so long as they choose to live here. That's why Intro 1566, co-led by Council Member Drum and myself, is so important for our city. And I thank the Chairman Menchaca and the Speaker for helping us to pass this bill very soon. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Member Rodriguez, and all the voices that you lifted in your statement and your continued support of Amanda and her family as we move forward in your district. We were, our, our hearts and prayers are with everyone. And so uh, I'm going to call the vote, um, but I do also want to acknowledge that Councilmember Ku and Councilmember Espinal are here as well today from the committee. And I want to highlight something very important about these bills. These Both of these bills have been a result of the tireless work that this session and this committee have done in our leadership with this committee and the Speaker of the City Council. The hearings that we've held are, have been incredible hearings, some of them for the first time ever heard by this council. The day laborers and domestic violence. We had a public hearing on mixed status families and agency coordination. We had two hearings about immigrant seniors, adult literacy hearing, dreamers hearing their voice in this council about their needs, human trafficking, a topic for the first time ever raised on ethnic media. The upcoming UN T visa hearing next week on September 13th that I invite you all to be at. We also had a hearing on legal services and the unaccompanied minors and deta detained immigrants, language access. And all these were accompanied by the first time ever that we've had a budget negotiations hearing by actually holding a budget hearing here where we brought the city to tell us one thing, how is this budget impacting our immigrant brothers and sisters and our immigrant families. That is the power of this council and that is something we continue to wield here and forever. And with that, I want to call the vote. Thank you. Uh, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on immigration. Chairman Chaka. I vote aye. Drum. I vote aye. Ku. Uh, may I explain my vote? 
Uh, first, I want to thank the uh, Chairman Chaka for uh, doing a very wonderful, very good job for advocacy uh, for our immigrants. Being an immigrant myself, I condemn uh, President Trump for his actions on DACA and, or, and all the other things. No? I want to thank uh, Councilmember Trump and Rodriguez for their, their leadership in helping immigrants in New York City. Uh, so I want to add my name to both of the two bills. Case okay, ever then I, I will I or no. Espinal. Before I vote, I would like to uh, add my name as a co-sponsor to both of these bills, and uh, I vote aye, and congratulations to the sponsors. We have a vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Both items have been adopted by the committee. Thank you so much, and I now close this hearing. Thank you.